The BMW E30 timing belt. Probably the most requested video I've ever had on my channel as to date. There are no other videos, so I figured I'd make my own. So, E30 source here making a timing belt video. So, I bought another car. I bought a 1987 325i. It's a four-door stick, and uh, it's a pretty nice car, but it hasn't run since 2004. So to risk breaking the timing belt and uh, you know having to basically get a new head for the car, I figured I should probably replace the timing belt before I even try starting it. So I'm going to show you how to do the timing belt, the water pump, and a camshaft seal because you might as well do it while you're there. So without further ado, let's get started. Start by disconnecting the coolant system. All the hoses should be a six millimeter uh, clamp on them. And as you can see right there, I just broke mine. Uh, they were crazy rusty <laughs> and uh, obviously at the end of their life. But uh, so it also helps to spray down the hose clamps with PB Blaster or WD-40 just to get some oil on them to help them come out. And uh, you'll see I do that later and it makes a whole big difference to get them off. But disconnect the cooling system and all of its relative hoses around the car. Once the clamps are taken off, you can inspect the upper hose like I did here. And I pulled it off and the coolant inside is mostly dried up. And, uh, no, you know, actually no water is really inside of it. It's just like uh, crummy kind of, you know, just dried up coolant. So uh, just inspect that. Make sure, uh, you know, you don't have any oil in there. Because if you are, then you might possibly need a head because the oil and the... Uh, coolant are mixing but anyway nonetheless just inspect the coolant that's inside now to actually drain the coolant you can climb underneath the car to the lower hose and as you can see there I broke the petcock draining plug on the radiator but loosen up this hose here and then drain it make sure that the clamp is completely disconnected off the hose um, you don't need to pull the clamp all the way through you can leave it still on the hose itself you just need to pull it out of the way and then pull the coolant hose off and have a catch pan ready because this stuff comes out quick Then on top of the car, you want to disconnect the coolant temperature sensor on the radiator. It's simply done by pressing the two tabs in and pulling out. Then you can take out the little clips that hold on the fan shroud. Then take out the 10 millimeter bolts that hold in the radiator. There are two. There's one on this side in this position and then there's one in the same spot on the other side. With those two bolts out, you can simply lift the radiator out of the engine bay along with the fan shroud. Now here I'm going to show you how I removed the old um, drain plug on the radiator. I cracked the head off of mine, uh, the old one that was in there, and uh, the plastic became very brittle over time. But here's how I removed it. So I took a crappy screwdriver that I had laying around and I heated it up with a torch. You don't need to get it crazy hot, just hot enough. Then you just stab it into where the old plug was and twist and it cracks right out and it'll come right out in one piece. With the radiator and fan shroud out of the way, now it's time to take out the fan and its clutch that holds onto the water pump. So first, before you do anything, if you want to know if you have a bad water pump, you'll check for a floppy fan. You just push the fan back and forth and if it flops around, then you know that it's bad. Now, what I did was I took a one and a quarter uh, inch wrench to take off the nut. However, the wrench wasn't able to stick all the way down because of the face of the water pump and the bolts that hold it on. So what I did was take one of the bolts out and that gave me enough clearance to put the wrench down in there and eventually hit it out with the wrench and spin off the fan. Just note that the fan is reverse threaded, so right is loosen, left is tighten. With the fan clutch out of the way, you can then move on to removing all three of the belts, the alternator, air conditioning, and power steering belts. 
you want to start by removing the power steering belt. So take the bracket that the power steering pump is on and start to loosen the 13 millimeter bolts around it. Do not move to the uh, to the nut that tensions the belt just yet. Start to loosen up the uh, bracket that holds it around. And if any of them are real, real tight, just use PB Blaster and let it sit on it for a couple seconds. Now you can climb underneath the car and also remove the 13 millimeter nut that holds on the tension uh, tensioner part of the bracket. The way it works is that it has little teeth and these teeth sit in other teeth and they kind of interlock. And so as you turn the one nut on one side, it'll tighten it or loosen it wherever you, you know, whatever you would really like. Just note that there are also two down here, two 13 millimeter bolts that you need to just loosen up bolt and nut that you just need to loosen up and then you'll be able to push the power steering pump out of the way and get its belt off with everything loosened on the power steering pump you can push this little nut or bolt and nut down it spins it you'll see how it spins it's interesting it's a 19 millimeter head and if it's too tight don't keep on cranking at it and because you don't want to break the teeth that are on the tensioner of it but some of these belts kind of tend to get a little stuck sometimes, so it doesn't hurt to also spray them down with penetrant. If your car has been sitting for 11 years, that's what happens. But the belt is off on the power steering pump. It's also not a bad idea to mark which belt came from where. So ALT for alternator, PS for power steering, and AC for air conditioning. Now for the air conditioning bracket. It's a little simpler than the power steering. There are 13 millimeter nuts that hold it on, and again, these are pretty tight, so it doesn't hurt to spray it down with penetrant oil, and then you're able to take them out. Well, you don't really need to take them out all the way. You just need to loosen them enough so that you can move around the uh, pump or uh, compressor. And uh, there are a couple that hide, that tend to hide in some places. They're all 13 millimeter nuts, but, uh, just take your time with this and, you know, again, don't crank that toothed nut if it's too tight because you will just strip the teeth out and there's no, then there's no way of you tensioning the belt when you're all done. Now it's time to move on to the alternator. So it's right above the power steering pump and take off the 13 millimeter. Uh, we'll just loosen the 13 millimeter bolt that is on the bottom of the alternator. Then loosen the 13 millimeter nut on the back of the tensioner bolt. Then loosen the all the tension from it with the 19 millimeter on the uh, tensioner bolt, right like that. With the alternator belt out of the way, you can then move on to the water pump bolts. Just remove the other three, and they are 10 millimeters. You can now remove the pulley from the water pump. Now remove the three recessed 8mm bolts that hold on the distributor. You don't need to crank these on or crank these off, and they are self-recessed, so that means that they will never come out. They will always stay in the distributor. They have a little washer on the back of them. Once you remove all three, then you can just move the cap out of the way. Now is the time to replace your distributor if need be. So just check the points and see if they're all ground down. If not, then you can keep on reusing the old one. Now you can remove the rotor from the distributor. They are held on by three three millimeter Allen heads and these are also self-recessed so they'll never come off this rotor either.
Then you can take off the rotor. Now you can remove the timing covers. There are two covers, but the top one you have to remove first. It has a 13 millimeter bolt on right there. And once that's removed, you can then take out the 10 millimeter bolt on the other side of the timing cover, which is right there, and it easily comes out. Now remove the clip that holds on the crankshaft position sensor like that and then unhook the position sensor or really take off the timing cover from there its motor mount will also come off with it and here's my first glance at the old belt it actually doesn't look too bad considering but it's always assuring to replace it believe me now it's going to be kind of hard to see but there are six 13 millimeter bolts that hold on the harmonic balancer at the bottom. So my recommendation is get a 22 millimeter wrench to hold the middle part of the crank, the big, you know, the big bolt that sticks out, and then go around in a circular pattern and take off all six 13 millimeter bolts. With all six removed, you can then take out the front part of the harmonic balancer and then followed by the rear end of the harmonic balancer. And sometimes it takes some encouragement from a hammer to hit off the back end of it. But once you get it off, that's what it looks like and put it to the side. Now you can focus your attention on the bottom timing cover. It is held on by one 10 millimeter bolt and is easily removed. Now line up your timing marks. So on the head of an ETA motor, it's got an arrow and then it's got a little line on the head, just like this. Line those up along with on the bottom side, line up the crank just like that. Once both are lined up the same, then you're good to go. If one is and one isn't, do not do not go any further, I guess you could say, with taking the belt off. Make sure that both of them are lined up at the same exact time. This also applies to the 325i with the M20B25 engine. The eyes, however, will require you to put the harmonic balancer back on to line up those two marks right there. And if you go to put the harmonic balancer back on, it only goes on one way because there's like a little tiny hole where a little pin on the engine itself goes back in. So it only goes on one way. Now for the water pump, there are three 13 millimeter bolts that uh, you have to take off in order to take the water pump off. So just loosen those up. They're there, there, as well as there. They're a little tight in some spots, so just take your time with this step. Now you can pull the water pump out of the way and make sure to have a catch pan ready because this is where the most amount of coolant will come out. And here's the nasty old water pump. These hose clamps are rusted on, so uh, I'll have to pull those off later, and I'll show you exactly how I did it. Now with your timing marks and everything else out of the way and lined up, you can then move on to the tensioner right here. Now there's a sneaky 13 millimeter bolt hiding right at the top right there. It's kind of tough to see, but it's right there. And you just want to loosen that um, enough so that you can start moving the tensioner away from the belt. Now to take the tensioner out, you can take out that 13 millimeter bolt there that you just loosened, and then you can take a wrench right there and loosen up the other bolt that holds the tensioner on. And once that's out of the way, you can see that the all the slack has uh, come off the belt, and you can then pull your tensioner right off along with the belt.
Now back into the engine bay where the water pump previously was. There's going to be gasket left over there. Make sure you scrape all of the gasket off with a razor blade. If you don't, you're going to have a leaking water pump and you might as well just take everything back apart just to do the water pump. Believe me, it's not worth it. So scrape all the old gasket off with a razor blade. Now get your timing belt kit and start to take it out of the box. Um, I like Continental. The Continental kit is uh, probably the best one on the market in my opinion. Um, and inside includes the tensioner right there, along with the belt and then the sticker that tells you when it was replaced. And you can stick that wherever you want in your engine bay. And uh, with that being said, it's also important that you kept your old hardware to mount the tensioner, uh, the spring, its pin, and the bolt that you see I'm playing with right there. Um, it's important that you keep that stuff because you're going to need that uh, to use later. Then you can mock up where the tensioner will go. Just loosely put it in. You don't need to tighten it down all the way just yet. Once you get the timing belt on, then you, uh, then you can do that. But just loosely put it in the way right now so you can start getting everything back together. Now get out your water pump right there and put on its gasket. Just loosely put it in the place, make sure you know which way the gasket goes um, and which way the uh, outlet and inlet went uh, for the water pump. Now that you have it lined up and you know where it's gonna go, just leave it the way it is and start putting it in the car. And loosely snug the bolts into place uh, just so you have the water pump lined up along with its gasket. Um, this is kind of a painstaking pro uh, process because you're, uh, you kind of have to be a contortionist to get in there. But once you get it, believe me, you'll get it and uh, it's pretty satisfying knowing that you don't, you're not going to need to do the water pump. And this is what it looks like installed. Just note that earlier models have a different water pump than the newer models, so make sure you know which one to get. And then torque all the bolts to spec, and here are the specs for the torque settings. So just know what kind of bolt you have, uh, either the M6 or M8, and those are the specs right there. Remember this is in foot-pounds, uh, and if you have an inch-pound torque wrench, just convert it over. Uh, it's a lot easier. So here's where I did the camshaft seal. I put a flathead screwdriver in between the camshaft sprocket and a bolt on the head and then took the Allen key and put it in there. And all you gotta do is just crank them off and the camshaft sprocket comes out. It's as simple as that. Um, it's pretty easy and straightforward to do. And with the sprocket out of the way and removed, you can then take off the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold on the seal right behind it. Um, I'm doing that right now. So here's the seal. Um, you can take the old one out by clipping it and breaking it out and it'll eventually pop right out. Don't use too much force because you don't want to break the metal uh, thing that holds around it. And then to press in the new seal, you can get a 30 millimeter socket head just like that and just tap it in lightly. And remember also it helps to oil it, but um, once it's lightly tapped in, then you're good to go and just reinstall it. And also don't forget there is a really, really important red O-ring that's on the back side and you also need to get that part as well. They're really, really cheap too. They're like 10, 20 cents um, and they look like that. They go on the back side. And that's probably one of the more important seals back there. Um, just like that, make sure you have it rolled all the way around and seated. And once it's good, then you're good to go. Now take the bracket with the new seal and just kind of press it in the correct way. It began raining here, so I, uh, I kind of struggled to get it around. Uh, but once it's lined up, then you can take the two 10 millimeter bolts and line them up on either side and then tighten them down evenly back and forth, maybe five turns one side, five turns the other, and then you're set to go. And there's no real torque on this either. Um, you know, tight enough, we'll say, is the torque. Then put back on the camshaft sprocket. 
and the centerpiece only goes on one way so it's a specific design so that you can't mess it up or put it backwards or anything like that and then tighten it back down the same way you took it off here don't worry about moving it so much with the timing since the belt is off um, at least don't rotate the camshaft a ton it's okay if it wiggles back and forth just a little bit but not too much and uh, there's no torque on this really either uh, we'll say tight enough and uh, make sure you have a screwdriver pinching the sprocket to the head of the uh, engine and if it's off by just a little make sure just to reline up the timing marks and if it's relined up then uh, you're set to put the belt back on now get the belt and tensioner set in place and yank the timing belt as hard as you can um, get all the slack out of the side that doesn't uh, move around in the tensioner uh, the long side will say that doesn't have anything to go in and out of um, get all the slack out of there and then once you're uh, done you can just kind of pull it over the camshaft it's, it's a tough process I will tell you that uh, but once you get it and then it's uh, set to go and just slide it back onto the camshaft sprocket believe me you'll get it just if you're really puzzled keep on trying and don't be afraid to take a little bit of a risk here I know it's a little scary um, but you can also hit the belt back on with the hammer just lightly lightly tap it um, if it's not you know wanting to go on because it's so new and uh, you know not stretched out we'll say and then you can test for any play that's in the belt uh, right there there's not too much um, again I go back with this hammer I know a lot of people are gonna say whoa 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 don't do that don't do that um, I've been doing this a couple times and it never damages the belt um, it just helps me put it on better and I failed to mention before um, you should put the tensioner back on with the spring against the water pump and uh, push it all the way towards the water pump now you're gonna watch here I'm gonna loosen up the bolt and the tensioner is going to move forward and move inward towards me um, and that's where all the slack comes out of the belt just like that and once it's uh, once I've let the thing out, you can see here, um, there's not a ton of slack here. It, a little bit is okay, um, but, you know, not a ton. A lot of the slack is in here uh, with the tensioner and uh, where it goes up into the camshaft sprocket. But here there's not a ton, so uh, this looks pretty good to go. Um, I know it looks like a lot, but it really wasn't. Um, and then all you got to do is retighten the tensioner. And I always like to take the car, put it in neutral, make sure you have it on jack stands or some, or um, a brick or chalked, the wheels are chalked. But I always like to turn over the engine twice um, to see if everything lines up. And as long as everything does, um, then you're set to go to put everything back together. Um, I, this is the part where people get most scared is, oh, do I have enough tension? And did, I, did they line up nicely? Um, but so the biggest factor here I say is don't worry about the tension worry about the timing marks because as long as the car timing marks line up with each other tension doesn't exactly matter it does but don't be worried that the belt isn't tensioned you saw mine there um, you should have a pretty good idea of this and uh, as long as both timing marks line up then you're set to go and after two rotations over, uh, I check the timing marks again, just make sure that everything lines up. And uh, there, also make sure that that bolt is tight on your tensioner. You don't need to crank it, but make sure both these are tight on the tensioner. Uh, and make sure your tensioner is tight. And there's the little bit of slack that's in the long side of the belt. Again, don't really worry so much. As long as the timing marks line up with each other, then you should be set to go. And uh, just start putting everything back together the way it came out. I know I hate to leave people hanging there um, with reassembly, but it really is just the opposite of the disassembly. So just start putting everything back together and uh, then fire it up and see if it runs. 
I hope this video helped anybody looking to do the BMW E30 timing belt. Um, this is one of the tougher procedures, but after doing this project, um, you can basically tackle anything on the E30. Uh, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope people can get information out of it, and stay tuned for more E30 videos.